All right, day one of the rear end change. Huh. What that what we're doing here is we're taking and we're changing out from the A8 277 gears to a 327 LSD diff. But while we're doing that, we're also going to switch over to the V8 axles. In order to do that, and these parts all fit together, is you have to change the flanges from the V6 flanges to the V8 flanges so that the V8 axles will mount up to this diff, which they do. So what we've done is, as you can see here, the difference in size between the V6 and the V8. So we've put the V8 flanges on. These are brand new from GM. The V8 SS axle flanges, both sides. Use a slide hammer to take them out. I'll show you that in a second. Sorry. You're fine. Um, and that way we can mount the axles in when we take the other diff out. Now when we got the axles, I got these for 50 bucks and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to change the axles. You don't have to, you can keep the V6 flanges on and use the current V6 axles, but why not upgrade when you can, when you're doing it all. So, but we had a bad CV boot on this axle, so we had to change that out. That was the beginning of our day, learning. Never done any of this before. So we're just kind of learning as we go. The other thing you have to do is um, the difference between the V6 manual diff with the 327, which this is, and the 277 that comes in the automatic 8 is your drive shaft flange, which is currently attached to my slide hammer here. So this flange is different than the one that is on my car, so I had to take this off. So when we take the other diff out, we will be installing that on this. For those of you guys wondering what a slide hammer is, this is what a slide hammer is. Basically, you attach... You get a slide hammer attachment, and this is just kind of like a universal fitment one um, that we rented just to use for both sides, and it worked great. Um, you bolt it on, might need some bolts and nuts, and then you just use this hammer, and you just slide it back and forth, and it's going to pop off what you need to pop off. There's also a C-clip on this that you do have to remove, but that you just need a tool. I got it over here somewhere. As it goes, I have no clue what I did with it. Oh, it's right here. So, this is the C-clip removal tool that I used. It just goes in the two little holes of the C-clip, and you pull to press it apart, pop it off. You attach the slide hammer to it, hit it a few times, and that slides right off. We're gonna have to do the same thing on the diff once we pull it out of the car. Um, same thing on these. You know your slide hammer, you just bolt to two spots. Pop it out, hit it a few times. These came out super easy. There's just a C-clip on on these, and uh, they pop in and pop out. Um, I actually hit one side back in with my hand, but we're gonna seat it. You know, use a piece of wood and a hammer, just uh, so you're not hitting it directly. So we're gonna have the V8 flanges, the V8 axles, <laughs> the 327 LSD diff, and that's all gonna be going on the car tomorrow because the exhaust was problematic taking out because we had to remove the exhaust so we could get into the diff. Um, so on my exhaust, because this is the MBRP race series exhaust, um, up to, all the way up to, you can see the X pipe and then all the way up and I got some carbon TRs up there and then those are um, V flange mounted to my custom down pipes. You can see those sticking down. And so we needed to drop the whole exhaust so that we could get the diff out. So we're gonna remove these, we're gonna remove the axles, we're gonna remove the diff, we're gonna pull the flange off, we're gonna put it on, and we're gonna mount it all back up. And then I just gotta change the tune, and I'll be done. So that's where we're at on day one. As when removing the axles, um, your axle nut is 36 millimeters, and um, on one part of it, it's bent into these grooves. Um, you need to bend that back up so you can um, get it off. So we're going to take off 36 millimeter bolt. All right. And that's the bolt that comes off. Nut. Nut. Thank you. And then on this side, same thing. We already got it off. And then underneath the car on your diff, you have uh, what's called. Now you could probably use a regular socket on these, a 10 mil, but, um, we did not, because these are, we actually were tearing up the socket and the bolts. Even, these are torque to yield, so you're not going to reuse these. 
but um, we wanted the proper sockets for them anyways because you got to put them back on. So um, they're like reverse um, torque sockets. So they're, they're called torque sockets. And uh, you can see here that this is a torque socket. This is a e, E14 is what we use to take them off. And we just use the impact, turn the wheel, impact it off, turn the wheel, impact it off. So now we have these all off under here. Now we dry, you know, we took our whole exhaust out, but um, you know, custom exhaust, they all come out different. So we got this off, we got the axle not off. We're trying to take the axle off without having to drop any of the suspension, but we might not be able to because see this flex is here. In and out. So we're gonna try to pull that off now and see if we can get the axles out without having to take apart any of the suspension. Yeah, if you want. All right, so on this side, we're gonna do this side in a second. Um, my dad's gonna do this one while I video, but um, we got this one out. We got, uh, we got this one out without having to drop any of the suspension. Basically, you just push in on the axle, go up with it, come down and around, and then it just pulls out from your splines here. So we're gonna do this side now. I'm gonna record. And you can see it's gonna flex in. So you pull in, push up, go up, out, over, and down. And then she's just gonna pull out from the spine because you took off that 36 millimeter bolt. There you go, your axles are out. You don't have to take apart any of your suspension. Everything's still in place. Don't have to worry about alignment issues, things like that. So now we're gonna get the new axles. Uh, well, we got, we're taking the diff out because we're putting the new diff in. So to remove your diff, you have um, bolt here, bolt here, and then you got your big guy back here, and you also have to take apart from your drive shaft. So we're going to do that now. I'm not sure on these sizes yet. I'm going to figure them out. Okay, guys, so we have the axles out. Here's our SS axle. Uh, this is the CV boot that we had to change um, on the used axle. I mean, you can see the big difference in um, your left side axle. Um, and then your your end here is bigger as well, and that's why you ha we had to change the flanges so that it would fit onto that. So the flanges on the diff are changed to fit the new axles. And then over here, you can see that your... Other axle, there. I mean, the bars are about the same, but um, you know, you have to change it out anyways because once again, your ends are different, your flanges are different. So I showed you guys how to remove the flanges, and we just went over how to remove the axles. So now we're going to pull the diff out. Um, we're going to put the new diff in, and go from there. Okay, guys. So here's where we're at. So taking the diff out. We already did the axles, so that you saw that. So you have your three bolts here, nuts and bolts on your on your drive shaft. These are 18 mil, both sides. Um, you want to take it out from the nut. You want to take the nut off. So we didn't have an 18 millimeter wrench, so we had to use an 18 millimeter crescent on this side. We used the impact on this side. Um, I'm sorry, I used the impact on this side. Used the uh, crescent on this side. They came out real easy. You do need to put your car in neutral so you can turn your drive shaft though. Um, to do that, because a lot of people don't know in the automatic eight, you have to get in the car, you have to hold the start stop button down for eight seconds until all your electronics come on. Then you hold, then you put your brake down and you put your car in neutral. That's how you get your car in neutral and then you can just turn it, take a bolt off, turn it, take a bolt off, turn it, take a bolt off. We left one in because when we remove these, which are, these, you have your three diff mounts, you got one there, you have one here, and you have your big boy back here, which is a 24 millimeter. And we haven't taken that one out. We did take both these out, and these are loose. These bolts will come out. So, you, you know, these. this is pretty, this is not like stuck in the rubber there. So it's going to come down pretty easy once everything comes apart. So we kept a bolt in with the drive shaft. Uh, we're going to put the jack and we're going to put the jack right under here. We're going to set the jack here. We're going to take out this big bolt. Well, we're going to put the jack under it. We're going to take we're going to finish taking the sliding these out on each side and then we're going to take this one out and we're going to jack it down slowly. We'll take the drive shaft um, bolt out and then the diff will be out.
All right, so for those of you guys looking for um, the 327 LSD diff, just so you can see a visual difference, um, you can see that the standard 277 diff has this silver plate um, on this side, and it's flat along the side, and then your LSD diff, your 327 LSD diff, um, is much bigger. Also, you know, when you do get the LSD diff, you do have to make sure you change your standard V6 axles to the LSD axles from the V6 manual or get the VA axles like I did and change the flanges because your standard V6 axles will not fit on this. One is too long. You need a shorter axle for the one side because it, the difference in how, you know, that's flat on that side and it's, you know, the you have the bigger cover. So, just wanted to show you guys that. Took the flange off the front of that because we have to take this one off of our old diff. Um, and that's what, we, you know, we use the slide hammer for. You can still see that one attached to the slide hammer. We're going to remove this one and we're going to put it on the new diff. And that way it can mount up to our current drive shaft. We're putting the new flange back on. Um, all we did is we took a, our 36 millimeter socket that we used to take uh, the wheels off with and we centered it here right like that and that is perfect to fit over the gears gives you a nice hitting point and it just pushed it right back on and now we just need to fit the c-clip back in your shadows in your way i know yeah, that made me... and we'll put the c-clip back in there after the c-clip's done then this diff is put back together we need to fill it with fluid uh, take off that tie strap and we'll get it back in there. Okay guys, so before you put your used new diff in, make sure you change your fluid. Um, if you're going to the 327 diff that is non-LSD, it's only 0.53 quarts. So your, your old diff, if you have the automatic eight, your old diff, well, you'll only be changing this if you have the automatic eight. Your old diff took 5.3 quarts and it did not require limited slip additive. Um, so you can get this at, at any auto parts store. You need 75.90. Um, you're gonna need two quarts of it because the new LSD diff is gonna take 1.2 quarts. So as you can see here on the back, um, formulated for limited slip diff use. It's got the friction modifier additive in it, which is your limited slip additive. So what we did is we just, you know, we put our, took our uh, drain plug out, tilted the oil pan. This thing was full of metallic swirls. The drain plug, which is magnetic, had all kinds of metal on it. So this had never been changed. Do not assume that when you're buying a used diff, now this one only had 17,000 miles on it, but these things need to be changed sooner than later. So do it now while it's out. Um, or even if you're watching this video and you've never changed your diff fluid, change your diff fluid. It should be done, honestly, probably around 4,000 miles. Um, because when these things break in they release a lot of metal shavings and you don't want that stuff running back through your gears So we went ahead and changed it out um, We're gonna refill it with 1.2 quarts and then we'll go ahead and get started putting it in Okay, so when draining your diff um, You have two plugs you have your drain plug and your fill plug and they just take um, a standard socket wrench 3 8 socket wrench you just put it right here. That's your drain plug at the bottom your fill plug is at the top So we just took out we drained all the fluid now. We're gonna take out the top plug well, we're going to tighten that one up and then we're going to take out the top plug and we're going to fill it up we're back guys so here's what we got now we got the axles in what we did is we um we rolled this under here on the jack i got all my bolts in so i can remove my jack but um we put the axles in first let them hang down so both sides you know you got your nice fat axle over here v8 axle and it goes over there and then you got your other one over there okay and we let them hang down and then we rolled this under here on the jack and we got it in we jacked it up we fit those in as we jacked it up it's because this side is a lot tighter than it was originally so getting it in after the fact is not going to work like it did taking them out that side still comes out just like they did when we removed the other axles but this side does not so you want to put them in as they go and as you can see we just put two of the bolts in to get it in there and lined up um, we got our big bolt back in. It's not back in all the way. Um, we are going to, we don't know the torque on these. I tried looking it up. So this one was, was pretty torqued down. So we're going to put some, some, 
some grunts into that one. You know, maybe three or four. And then uh, over here, your your flange bolts for your drive shaft. Um, once again, I could not find any torque specs, but on the fifth gen, they're 85 foot pounds. So we're gonna do the same thing on those. And then these ones up here, to these mounts, once again, don't have any torque specs, but those really weren't that tight. So, you know, we're gonna judge it by grunts, two grunts maybe. And then she's in. So, oh yeah, one more thing. These, okay, so these are bigger on the V8 axles. The V6 E14, the V6 bolts are E14. The V8 bolts are E12. And like I said, these are hex, these are hex sockets. Do not try to use a five point or a 12 point or universal. We tried using a universal socket when we took out the V6 ones and we tore up the bolt and we tore up the socket. So then we went on the hunt for some hex sockets and we, we found them at Home Depot, but they only had one set, um, but we, it had the E12 and the E14. So the V6 needs the E14 to get them out. The V8 needs the E12. So you do need both of those if you're doing this V6 to V8 axle swap. So these are V8 manual axles. I do not know for sure if there's a difference between the V8 manual axles and the V8 automatic axles. I went ahead and bought the V8 manual axles. They mounted right up. They fit okay. Um, so I don't think, foresee there being any issues to that. So we're going to get everything tightened down. Um, we're going to get the exhaust back on. And I'm not really going to do any video on taking my exhaust on and off because my exhaust is... You know, you got your hangers, your standard exhaust is gonna come off, you got your hangers, but how mine mounts up at the front is gonna be completely different than anybody else's, so I'm not even gonna do a video on that. Um, but it, once I'm done, I need to go in, I need to tune, I need to put in my gear ratios and figure out what else needs to be changed. And we'll, we'll take it for a test drive before then. We'll, I can put in the gear ratio um, in the tune and not change any of my RPM shift points, just manual shift for now, but we should, uh, we're gonna have shorter first, second gears, third gears, etc. Hopefully get a better launch out of this. So um, that's pretty much gonna conclude the end of this. Uh, there really isn't much else to do but tighten down my bolts and get them in. Um, oh yeah, these here, these are 35 foot pounds. So these are torqued to 35 foot pounds. Um, I'm sorry, 45 foot pounds. Scratch the 35, not 35, 45. And uh, make sure you're buying the right part number because there were shorter versions of these, but if you buy them, they shouldn't be the shorter ones because the VA guys had problems with these backing out on them. And uh, they would lose, you know, they would, their, their axle would fall down um, and then it would shred things up. So the, these are longer. These are the newer bolts that GM changes out. If you have that problem and you're a VA guy, you need to check these bolts back here. Make sure that they aren't backing out on you. Um, and if they are, get to get your car to Chevy and get them to change them out. Um, once again, fo 45 foot pounds torque on those. Um, oh yeah, we got to put the, the big wheel. We got to put the big wheel nut on back here. Um, I have the torque specs, but once we get that done, I'll just do, I'll add it in. So back to those bolts again. So these are actually called retainers so that I had a hard time finding them but I did finally find them and here's your part number 11601876 I got mine from GM Parts Giant um, now one of them one part is 10 10 to 11 dollars but one part is the retainer and two bolts so and you need three of these for each side so you need to order six of these total once again these are the E12 these are the longer bolts that fixed the problem the V8 um, cars had that they were backing out. So I hope that information it helps you guys. This is pretty important part. Make sure you're getting the right part. Um, I don't even know that GM sells the other ones anymore, but you don't want to get the ones that back out. You can see they have this um, anti-seize or, I mean, sorry, anti-like back out material right here. So you got to kind of tap them in and then you thread them in the rest of the way. 45 foot pound torque spec. Um, and that's it.